The gentle rolling hills of southeastern Washington's Palouse country are serene and pastoral. They look like giant sand dunes because they were formed in much the same way. These hills were shaped over tens of thousands of years from wind-blown dust and silt. West of the Palouse, travelers observe a stark landscape transformation. The curvaceous loam hills give way to the channelized scablands and their towering vertical rock walls. Visitors often wonder what caused such a dramatic change. Towards the end of the last ice age, about 18,000 to 15,000 years ago, a glacial ice dam thousands of feet thick blocked the Clark Fork River in northern Idaho. Water rose 2,000 feet behind the dam and stretched eastward 200 to 250 miles into northwestern Montana, creating glacial Lake Missoula. The lake grew to cover 3,000 square miles. Eventually, the ice dam weakened, burst, and released as much as 500 cubic miles of water, about the volume of Lake Ontario and Lake Erie combined, in just two days. A wall of water, hundreds of feet thick, thundered downstream at 65 miles per hour with 10 times more water than all the world's rivers today. This massive flood of water, icebergs, and debris shook the ground as it raced westward over 16,000 square miles in present-day Montana, Idaho, Washington, and Oregon to the Pacific Ocean. For thousands of years, ice dams repeatedly formed and burst as many as 40 to 70 times. The floodwaters, along with mobilized glacial ice, house-sized boulders, and debris, peeled away thick layers of Columbia Plateau basaltic lava and created the 2,000-square-mile channelized scablands in East Central Washington. In the wake, an intricate network of channels, colossal canyons, monumental gravel bars, and beautiful waterfalls remain as evidence of the cataclysmic events. Water and ice-borne rocks settled out of the floodwater slurry and low-velocity areas. This often left them in unusual locations, many miles from their place of origin. The floodwaters breached low passes along a nine-mile-wide divide between the Palouse River and the Snake River. Near Colotus, Washington, they spilled over a hillside saddle above the town and carved a six-mile-long, 600-foot-deep trench known as Devil's Canyon as it plowed towards the Snake River. Across the Snake River from the grain loading facility, huge gravel deposits from the flood cover part of the south side of the Snake River Canyon wall up to 300 feet above the river. The flood waters in this striking canyon have been replaced with a near steady flow of hikers on the abandoned railroad bed, tourists viewing Glacial Lake Missoula flood and Columbia Plateau lava formations, and grain trucks en route to wading river barges above and below Lower Monumental Dam. Before the floods, the Palouse River emptied into the Columbia River, several miles upstream of the Snake River mouth. During the floods, the surge cut through a low pass near Hooper, Washington. After making a 90-degree turn to the south at Little Palouse Falls, the river was rerouted from its ancient path through the former Palouse River Valley, now known as the Washtuckna Coulee.
from the falls, the river follows a relatively straight route to its confluence with the Snake River several miles upstream from the Columbia River.